Club Zero, Paranormal, Paranormal Doing. Hi, this is uh, Chris Andrews from uh, Club Zero Paranormal, bringing yet another paranormal podcast from Club Zero Paranormal. Uh, this is our fourth podcast, I do believe, in a series of various uh, internet podcasts covering all aspects of paranormal phenomena and the supernatural to everybody out there. So hi there, paranormal one and the spooky realm. So if you are uh, fortunate to have a laptop or an iPhone or an Apple device of some form, we are... We're coming through, you can download us direct from iTunes, which is available on apple.com. So on various podcasts that we've done, which is a bit like a, a bit like an internet radio show, I suppose, to a degree, we cover in various aspects, as I've said, of paranormal. And I've got somebody here taking photographs of me as we're going along. So we've got a room full of people here today on this one. Uh, and it's the, uh, joined by the Club Zero team, actually. And I think what we're going to be talking about this evening is the dangers of the paranormal. What does the paranormal possess? The dangers, i.e. you have things like the Ouija board um, and aspects of that nature where obviously if we was to talk about the Ouija board, the first thing that pops into people's minds is, I don't do it. No, I ain't associating with it. But why aren't we associating with the things like the Ouija board? Because we believe it's dangerous. So, is the Ouija board really dangerous or is it more a perception of our own minds? Well, this is what we're here to talk about. Um, you know, and we'll try and figure out things as we go along. It's about learning, joining together and learning. But as I said, this is Chris Andrews, Club Zero Paranormal, and you're listening to our fourth podcast. We're joined by Club Zero team. Good evening, guys and girls. Hi! They sound like a cheery bunch, don't they? All right, you guys, your perceptions on paranormal dangers. Anybody want to bring it forward, whatever, which is an area, obviously. Paranormal brings out various, you know, various, I mean, it's, there's loads of different elements of danger when you're going into buildings, if you haven't got a torch, um, you know, all the threats that pose potential dangers, you know, what, uh, You mean like Martin falling down holes? Well, Martin is good for falling down holes, he, he is very good, but uh, the thing with Martin is, he's like our sniffer dog, he detects the dangers before we do, so he hurts himself to save the others. He's like the so, He's like the canary in the mine, he dies first before we do. <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah, bless him. But he's still, he's still soldiering on, he's got plasters all over him, I think he's got a few broken bones here and there, there's loads more to come. But so he's a good guy, Martin. That's Martin Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, as we're saying, the dangers of the paranormal. Many people out there, they've heard of the Ouija board and they'll say no, and other people will think, turn around and say, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, we'll do the Ouija board. But why won't we do the Ouija board? What is it that we believe it causes? So... Anybody? Most people believe that it opens a portal that can't be closed. Oh yeah, do, do, do tell. They yeah. believe that it opens a portal that can't be closed, mm. which leaves the danger of if they destroy the Ouija board, they believe in a portal that's open, so activity is going to continue to happen. Mm. That's a belief that many people do have, whether it's open or whether, I mean, but is there any scientific concrete, concrete proof to say that there is a portal being left open. <coughs> you know, it's, uh, we do know that there has been reports in years of people actually, you know, there's fatalities have come from these things um, where people have, they've, they've died or they've, they've, they've come to contact with mysterious illnesses or loved ones or run of bad luck. But is that because the board's actually done it or is it because it's their own element? It's what would have happened to them anyway. Uh, Gemma, I don't know if you've got your name then. <laughs> No, I believe it's, um, the power of the Ouija board is a lot of, contains a lot of scare, it's all, all about scaremongering. There's been that many stories in the past of uh, Ouija boards and what they've done and that people have died and fires have started and it's all you know, gone horribly wrong because they have used a Ouija board. I believe it themselves, that... that themselves who've used the Ouija board have that in their mind which causes it to happen. Oh right, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's very possible, isn't it? It's very possible. I mean, I mean have you done Ouija board yourself at some stage? No, I've never have done a Ouija board. That's not to say I wouldn't do a Ouija board if it was done properly. Um because I don't necessarily believe in all the, the You've got very good concentration, yeah. you haven't you? 
We have to have a very, very good conversa- uh, con- conversation. Conversation. <laughs> Concentration. Yeah, that's what you've got to do in this game, haven't you? Exactly. You know, but, uh, please do carry on. It's very interesting what you're saying. Exactly. So, no, I, I genuinely believe that all the so-called incidences that have happened with the, you know, through, with the use of a Ouija board um, is actually done by themselves, their minds working. Right. So. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, sure, sure. A very interesting point. Yeah, man. Very interesting point. And, and I've got to say, I mean, as an investigator, you're very good on that side of things where your put the pressure is put onto you because obviously what we've just been doing then while you were talking, what you didn't see was doing, um, and the focus ability that makes a good, you know, good investigator. Shirley's. You've just been having your hand up there, chicken. Let me just turn this microphone around. I think what it boils down to, the biggest danger is fear itself. And fear is um, each of the individual, as an individual, can fear different things. And it comes from within the brain itself. So it's learning to control your own fears yeah. so that you, you da- the danger that surrounds you is a lot less... Um, i.e. it's like grounding yourself, making sure you, that you're grounded and you know what you're doing. Uh-huh. Um, they do say don't confront your fear because when you're doing that, you're actually festering it. So, you know, it's knowing it's there, but concentrating on other things around it um, uh-huh. so that it's not festering, so that you don't fear it. It's like with the, like with the Ouija board. I mean, a lot of people fear it, and that's the excitement that they get and why they use it because and then again it's it, the idea of like fear festering is when the dangers come into it yeah so. you're focused as well aren't you thank you no you're very focused yeah what we if someone said to you would you do a Ouija board um oh, so emma sorry emma you're a hand up there coffee. i was about to say there's another danger apart from open well perceived danger rather than um, portals being opened and being left open, is attachments. Some people believe that you could walk away from the, the Ouija board or close it down, but yet still have an attachment, um, like either demonic or a spirit or something, and that can create um, like a negative impact on your life. In some way. I mean, I know people who have used Ouija boards and then have come to me, so oh, I've, got, I've got scratches on my body and... I've got this, and it, you know, the, the normal, normal things which you just kind of write off as just not a normal occur- occurrence, and suddenly they become paranormal because of the, the association. Because people. they did the Ouija board the week before, everything, anything slightly odd, a noise, something falling off the, you know, a picture falling off the wall, it suddenly but becomes it's possible, paranormal. Though, isn't it, for people to to do these things, and then suddenly you get scratches on them. So like you get a paper cut. You don't really realise you've got a paper cut. It doesn't start hurting until you look down. And then you realise, gee, when did they, they do that? And it starts to hurt, doesn't it? That's when it starts to sink in. Yeah. So when these people that have got scratches in them, could have, it's a possibility that they could have acquired the scratches through some exactly. other way. It doesn't necessarily mean to do it to the I think you manifest, I think it's, you can, I think the power of the human mind is, you know, extremely Definitely. powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think you can, Manifest things yourself without using a Ouija board. Oh. As in, you can cause things to happen to yourself without that tool. It's a tool at the end of the day. It's a it's it's a tool, and you know it can be. It's so the the difference I what I look at is if some people would turn around and say, well, if you, if they ask us because we don't do it, obviously Ouija boards because it's putting people in that element or. The thing is, I suppose, is you don't want to subject them to think, because they're already going to go in with a negative aspect, aren't they? Yeah. Where the it's a fear, so isn't it? Well, it is, and it's something that uh, fear is a widespread thing, and it's something that can play with havoc on someone's mind, so we don't tend to do it and put them in that area. But some people would turn around and say, well, what's the difference between a weed doing conducting a Ouija board or a call out or a seance? Or glass divination. Yeah. Yep. Or, or glass yeah. divination. Yeah. Automatic writing. This. Yeah, well, all them aspects, yeah. all, they're all joined into the same element, aren't they? But, I mean, what I would say personally is that if someone wants to do a call-out, if you mention doing a call-out to someone, spin that round, um, they're not filled with fear, are they? They don't have that. You might get one or two people 
who think, oh, science, oh, I don't like the idea of that, but then obviously there are people, everyone to their own belief, but the majority, you don't hear about things coming from the sciences or carve outs or things like that. So they don't really, the minds are filled with the, the, the negativity, as they would if you was to conduct an Ouija board, which you can guarantee, if you've got ten people, if we went and took ten people in an investigation, eight of them would say, oh no, no, I'm not really into this. And if, we, if they did end up doing it, they'd have that negativity in the brain, wouldn't they, John? They'd have that, in the, yeah, not in, um, they would have that negativity in the brain. Um, and then, because it's a known, known factor, so they think something from the board, or demonic, or evil possession of some form is going to manipulate them on the mind. So in actual fact, thinking of that, maybe the Ouija board can actually, do, you know, can actually create harm because you know because it's it's maybe not the board itself but it's psychological, psychological it's to the person also, if they believe in this it's also quite a, almost like a ritual in a way isn't it well, yeah. also like you can get glass out and everyone puts a thing on it and it's glass divination hopefully it moves or mm. punch it there's something about the ouija board which is quite ritualistic mm. i think because of the way it's i don't know it's just, you know, the way you set it up and some people do an opening prayer or closing, there's just something very kind of <coughs> occult about it. Like that, maybe that's why people associate with that, like a dark it's magic like with press. it or the negative that side of things is. with it because it's something very ritualistic in a way. Yeah. Well, that's well, the way I see it anyway. It's all the same as, it's all Victorian anyway. Yeah. It's all like, you know, call out seances, table tipping. You know, all that. I mean, we've done table tipping, we've done call outs, we've done seances. Um, the well, we, the, the Ouija, Ouija board, board basically was a uh, was a board game brought up by Waddington's. Mm, Waddington's they made the game. Yeah. It was a board game just to amuse themselves while they were, you know. It goes back older than that. It's actually uh, it goes back quite a long time to China as well. There's you know it goes way back. I mean I think that was brought out in the 1800s. I think wasn't it the Ouija board? Um, but it goes back to. Yeah, 1100s. 1100s. Around about that period. China. Yeah, around about that period. Yeah. But it's still, you see, the thing is, I think, well, you know, is, is a lot of Hollywood and television. So you're all right there, guys. Are yeah, you? yeah, sorted, mate. Yeah, you carry on. The, is a lot of things on television and Hollywood sort of produce a lot of negativity. People believe things, what Hollywood portrays things to be, when it's not like that. But Shirley, what's your views, Chicken? I personally don't see a great deal of difference between a Ouija board and a planchette. Because you're using... The Ouija board and asking questions and it's going to let us or yes and no. With a planchette, you're you're asking it to move, hopefully in the way that you want it to write. Yeah. You do see, say, will you move to the left if you to say yes or right to say no when using it. So in in reality, it's very similar. So why do we associate fear with the Ouija board and not the planchette? We have the Ouija press. Board. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's got a bad name at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody, somebody actually yeah. does do it properly, I would, I would definitely say if they open it properly and close it properly, that there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. It's like you say, it's just bad publicity at the end of the day. Yeah. But personally, I wouldn't touch one. Why wouldn't you touch one? Why wouldn't I? Just in case, knowing my luck, nine times out of ten, something always does go wrong for me. And I'd be most be one of them people that something would happen. So Not badly, like I'll go and die or walk south off the edge of a cliff or anything like that, but mostly I would end up with an entity that would be around me because they seem to latch on to me for some unknown reason. So does that, that would sort of say to the point then that you believe that if you're sitting at a Ouija board or conducting that, that your belief is that something from that Ouija board will attach itself to you? It might not be a bad thing, it might be a good thing at the end of the day. Nobody can say that it's going to be a bad or a good thing. So would you use a planchette then? I've actually used one before. But it's just, it's, it's more down to your publicity that makes people think about the bad things of the side of it, to be quite honest, but it's proving it, isn't it, at the end of the day? Mm, like what you've just said, I mean, if you're going to go into this with a negative mind because you might think that something's going to something's going to happen or something's going to come from this. The chances are, because you're thinking that before, whether anything happened from the board or not, a belief in something is quite strong to that person anyway, and a lot of things can develop because of that belief. So the chances are you becoming ill or uh, 
run into a series of bad luck or certain events. That's every day with me, bad luck. It's, it's, well, it's, very po it's a possible way of, that it could happen anyway because your mind is going to be focused on the fact that this is going to happen to you because certain things are happening for the Ouija board. Mm. And anything that did happen to you, which would have been naturally probably happened anyway, you're going to put it down to the persona of doing the Ouija board. I'd actually anyway. do one, but I would not open it or close it. Mm. I'd leave that to somebody else. Yeah, you, you, I you would open it close. I'd be there and I'd actually be doing things with it, but what? I would not open or close it. You get kids doing it. This is the thing. The problem is people think they turn around about paranormal and, you know, they think, oh, well, we're going to do a Ouija board. That's the first thing that they ever say. They'll do a Ouija board. Um, you know, and then they do this. They think it's a bit of fun. A lot of things don't happen, but sometimes a lot of things do happen because they're frightened of doing it. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, things don't get shut down proper. It's the, with the whole thing. With, I mean, I watched a programme last night called Teenage Exorcists. Um, it was about three a uh, priest and three girls that came over from America, and these three teenage girls were exorcists, and they they approached a, a young boy just in the street. They were trying to get people to come into this. See, that's something I think that's dangerous. And there was a gentle a, a, a young lad with a pentagram with the ram's head necklace on and instantly you've got a demon inside you. you know, so the ram's head was it was it a representation of the goat of Mendes? Yeah. So it was it was a demonic Yeah it symbol. was a, but these the this the, 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 the this lad was of the Dio you know, Goth rocker Dio you know, right. um uh, type and um, yeah the, the, the instantly you have a demon inside you you need to come to this get to this gathering and we will perform an exorcist and we will rid you of this demon. And he mentioned that he had a Ouija board and that he kept this Ouija board so we had one at the house. Instantly, yeah, you, you're, you're cursed, you've got this demon, you need to come to this car, you need to bring it along, you need to destroy it, you need to... And they were adamant, these three girls and this priest were, you have got a demon inside of you and you need to bring this Ouija board. And so we did. And he actually scared. He actually, he actually was scared. He was nervous, and he went in, and they did this so-called exorcism. And then at the end, he had the Ouija board with him. And then at the end, they blessed, held a cross to the Ouija board, and blessed it. And then he smashed it into pieces on the on the thing. And he actually, he actually afterwards admitted that he was actually sad that he'd actually done it because. It had sentimental value, you know, it was sentimental to him, but he was glad because he was scared of what the, you know, of what they put in. And placebo. it, 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 it was put in, they put an idea into his head. Thought suggestion. It's a yeah. thought yeah. suggestion. Yeah. You are yeah. demonic, this is a demonic piece of work, you know, this is demonic, this, the same, they walk past a ISIS shop. But if you're, if you're ill... And I say to you, take this, or a doctor, somebody that you trust. Now, if you go to a priest, then most people will probably trust them in that respect. But if, if you went to a doctor, and he gave you these, this uh, prescription for tablets, and you, uh, this is going to make you better, and you take tablets, and you start feeling better, and you, then you find out a week later that really it was just smarties, but yet you felt yeah. better. That's a placebo effect where you're healing yourself to a degree, isn't it? Yeah. So... On that level, like you just said, thought suggestion. If he really believed, when he was told that was he's got a demon inside you, because of the way he was, for him to do this, because he had dark level, hair and he had piercings well, yeah. and he wore a necklace. But obviously the placebo well, well, I got, got, I got, got the I walk around shops on that have the pentagram on the I'm, I'm, the I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly. But they walked past an ISIS building. They walked to an ISIS shop, and there they were looking in, and there was development classes posters. Uh, teenage development classes ages from I think it was nine to fourteen or something like that yeah. where you could come in and do development it and uh, it was dangerous it was uh it was witchcraft it was church or something that said that or something, no it? these three girls that had come at these three teenage exorcists right, that yeah. had come over from america right. and <laughs> instantly it was demonic it was evil it was dabbling with the devil it was all this. Were they the ones that hate Harry Potter? 
because I remember reading something about something like that, and even oh, Harry Potter was turning children into Satanists. I'm not sure, but I would be surprised by yeah. the way that they were talking, yeah. because it really was. Um, again, it's again, it's putting a fear, it's scare one girl. There was a it's young girl like on there that, that they said, the the exactly, there was a young girl that said, that they turned around and said, you're cursed. But how can because they she do had <clears throat> bad luck. Now, I believe if you have a negative feeling about yourself, if you're feeling down and, it, and you continuously feel down, negative things will happen because you draw them to you because you are feeling negative you yourself. Yeah. Exactly. You feel positive, you bring positive things towards you. Now they told her that she needed an exorcism, that she had a, 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 a curse on her. She went and had a private... Which cost her £200. Which cost her, yeah, wow. a, a donation of £200. She went and had a, a private um, session and they held a cross to her head and demon be gone. Joe, you know, I draw you man, out, say to uh, yeah, and, 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 and uh, yeah, yeah, and they did all this, and they did all, and they did all, and they did all this, they did all this with her, and she came out, she went, and she was really disappointed, uh, because she'd watched his, the priest that had taught these three teenage exorcists, she'd seen his videos on YouTube, and these women and men that he was performing exorcisms were screaming and writhing and she went and I didn't do any of that I didn't feel anything and she was disappointed the exorcisms anyway can only be you know technically they should only be sanctioned by uh, by you know a, a, an authorized minister yeah you know, no they, according uh, with, they, with what they were doing what right. they were doing uh, they called they called it an exorcism. Well, the, well, people's interpretation of ex exorcisms uh, can vary from level to level. But me personally, when we talk, when you're t when we're talking about parent or alleged activity or alleged paranormal experiences or uh, experiments that can cause physical harm yeah. or emotional harm, yeah. which can lead to physical harm. But me personally, I think when you've just been talking about exorcists um, and things like them, if somebody was to turn around to you and say, I, "I'm bringing in an exorcist." The word exorcist yeah. is like, puts the fear of God no, in anybody it's straight away. It's scaremongering. It's scaremongering. They, in it my words, it. in my word, in, in my, you know, my own point of view, they were scaremongering. They were just out there to scare the heebie-jeebies out of a lot of people. And that's what they did. There was this young lad with his girlfriend. They were both scared. So they, they, they were that scared that they went along. They went and he you know, they performed this exercise. So that, a money making racket basically. Yeah. 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 Yeah Completely wrong. They're just giving. Yeah. They were just approaching people in the street. They were basically to get money out. Of the cop, yeah. basically, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, this young girl paid two hundred pound for I'm a teenager with a cross to Why hold a cross to her forehead and go, "Demon, be gone! You will be gone! You will lift this curse!" And then they went, and the curse is lifted. <laughs> when you can get a vicar or a priest to do a private lesson for free. <coughs> I might give her a call actually, see if they can come and let's make it. Give them a house for free. The young girl did actually turn around and say she wasted her £200. Yeah. Um, well, people happy. believe in these things, I, don't they? Yeah, to, to do I do these think it's, it's it's very very dangerous because I mean there are people that have underlying health issues. Yeah, definitely. And I think stunts like that <laughs> can actually you know tip somebody over the edge personally. Yeah, definitely. Well, basically, these people that are going around doing this sort of thing that haven't got, probably have, have researched on how to do this, you know, these exorcisms, and you can get the information off the internet from anywhere and as much as you like. Basically, the predators, the preying on, on human society, and then they'll know exactly what person to look for, i.e., <coughs> how they dress, how they look, when they start speaking to them, they'll pick up on the mannerisms, they'll find out, you know, they'll be very good at psychologically profiling that person mm. and once you've done it they re they re they'll find out who is who's then ready for the you know basically going for the kill and once they've got them there 
you'll see the, their attitude changing as you, as you reel them in, especially going on a fishing trip. What would you say? I mean, like you get paranormal groups, don't you, and people who go around and do spiritual cleansing. Cleansing. <laughs> I'm going to send them to the light. To me, I mean, I don't know what you guys think. To me, isn't that a similar thing of an, you know, as an exorcism, ridding something? Like of an something. exorcism yeah. of a building, not of a person. But what gives anybody? The right. Change? I, what I've always said to people is Club Zero, you, para, you know, you, uh, you, you investigators of the paranormal, which is nothing more than documentation and observations, you know, we don't interfere or meddle, but you get other people <coughs> that will conduct, like you said, exorcisms and, uh, and things like that, but spiritual cleansings, and then suddenly these people who are, who are being uh, uh, clients are suddenly feeling, oh, everything's there, all right, it's good, because these people have sent it to the light, you know what I mean, but, they're, but for me personally, Where's the scientific evidence to state anything that you know, has anybody been sent to the light or, or cleansed? And if that's the case, can anybody just do this cleansing? Or is there a qualification well, again, involved? Again, in this so-called send, sending things into the light. Again, it's again um, thought projection. I think half the time okay. they'll tell these people, you know, in a certain way. They'll go right. They'll go into the mind and they'll start thinking about things that, like, say, what happened with us. The other night, the other, the other, the last weekend. On the private investment. Yeah, yeah, again, you start putting positive thoughts yeah. into someone's mind, then that'll bring, switch the negativity round, mm. so the positivity comes in, overcomes the negative thoughts, starts building them back up again, and once they're built up, that's when they'll probably find that things will start to slow down, or even stop. But it's actually going into the light, well, it, there's a lot of that, I think a lot of it's you, television messes things up. But there's a story that um, I put on Facebook today, I shared it on people's timelines I think, and that's about, um, it was uh, to do with this uh, medium who was uh, allegedly being blamed for hoaxing um, and he was conducting some ghost hunts in a, in a pub somewhere and I think it was about 14 people there attended and it was, um, they were paying as well, you know, when they asked for signs. It wasn't the guy was in the attic was it? It was a guy in the attic. Yeah, and this guy came forward out and he said he was homeless and, uh, you know, but he had designer jeans on and things like that. So this guy just went to the medium and spoke to his, to his crew there and then got in his car and drove off. You know, so I mean, but I get, I mean, but on that level, it's to say that give us a knock twice if you're there, boom, boom. It's, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that every, too many people are taking too many people, other people for granted. And they're using the paranormal, they're using spiritual cleansings, they're using, as you said, exorcisms, they're using a Ouija board, they're using paranormal groups, they're using whatever they need to do to manipulate that fact and manipulate the people. And then other people, I mean, when we got a call out the other day and we went to do this private investigation, the, the, thing that they, the first thing that they said to us, they'd had two other groups there previous before we went. And if things had been done, con you know, conducted in the correct manner, there would have been no reason to call us anyway. We had two, two previous organisations, and from what they said, I mean, I'm not at liberty to state who these organisations were, but um, you know, but from what they what they was describing, the conductations was just nothing more but charlatans throwing the wool over people's it was eyes, and these people were causing major problems. They were advised dangerous. to use a Ouija board, weren't they? They were advised like, to use that, one. Yeah. Um, to, help, to help get rid of it, mm. use a Ouija board. Yeah. yeah. And these people didn't know how to use it, or were just weren't confident, and they actually felt it made things worse. Exactly. The one of the girls there was told not to meditate. She yeah. loved to meditate. To get herself off Did to sleep at night and to relax, to relax. Over, and they said that if yeah. she meditates, she will be taken over by this negative spirit that is in the house, and that, yeah. But that's it's going in someone's that. house and putting the fear of God, and they're going around yeah. calling themselves mediums or paranormal investigators. When things like that, when anybody that does that, and now I know there's groups going to be listening to this now with anticipation, and you can listen to it all you want, but if you are the people that do that type of thing, then you might as well pack it up now because that is That's the biggest... That's irresponsible. That is yeah, very irresponsible. Yeah, found out. The it's biggest charlatans. Groups, paranormal, there's a lot of, a hell of a lot of good investigative groups out there, a lot of investigative in individuals and researchers who are, can, who are genuine. Um, you know, do genuine research to, to really to get people the help. There is people out there who are genuine that want to give people help, but they do it in the wrong way, without giving you know and, and without really trying. But then there's other people out there who just want to try and get themselves a name, 
go to the light, you do the Ouija board, do this and the other, and really can't give a damn about the clients or the people that they're doing. And they haven't looked into things and then they're leaving these people shortfall and with more fears than what they had when these groups went in. And to them groups, I say, if we ever come across you, we, you know, we just, you, we'd, we'd shut you down. I mean, we're nothing big ourselves, but we'd make sure that the, the paranormal community would turn your back on you if you was there. I mean, to advice to people out there, and like we said, there's a lot of groups out there, you know, that are, are brilliant, but just look after the people, do it for the right reasons. Don't initiate trouble and danger that's unnecessarily needed. Every, 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 every person has to be treated as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I mean, you can't go into each and every, um, whether it's a private invest or yeah. a normal invest, you can't go in the microphone, right? and do the same thing um, because each one is going to be totally different. Yeah. Um, it's like Gemma was talking about the excess, sorry to go back to that, but it's like when they were doing what they were doing, it was with everybody there. Now, I don't disprove that, um, you know, I do think that in some cases it does help people, but it's a private thing, it should be done yeah. with each and individual person, not like scaremongering and yeah. with everybody well, around person it. This person is terrified of yeah, what they've been told. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, when we walked in, I mean, obviously we can't give out information yeah, because it's a confidential, that, yeah. uh, confidential case we're working on, but just to, when, you know, this person was very reserved, the person in question was sat back and very reserved and was drawing and wouldn't acknowledge the fact that, I suppose, that we was there to a degree, very nervous, very within themselves, um, you know, and because of maybe not just the things that have happened to, to this person in the past or why, the reason why they called any uh, investigators out in the first place, but maybe the editation of previous visitation groups that have added this stuff to people, fear. you know. But yeah, added that fear. And, you know, and get, these people want peace of mind. The first thing that we think of is they want peace of mind. They, they've got to survive regardless of if anything's going on or not. They need to survive. And whether it's paranormal or not, to that person, it could be very, very real anyway. Mm -hmm. So you got, and that's how you've got to tackle it. You can't just walk in there and start waving a smudge stick around or a packet of sage and onion stuffing mix and saying this room is clear, <laughs> go to the light, which is what they do. And believe me people, there's people out there that buy oxo cubes and they use paxo stuffing and think it's a sage stick. There's people out there that really don't know. And they're causing more hindrance than harm. But that's not a reflectation. You know, we're not trying to turn and say, hey, we're the experts, we know what we're doing here. No, that's not a case at all. We're not the experts, but we do know how to look after people. We do know people's virtues and we do take into account people's feelings and, you know, and making sure they're safety. So if that makes us experts, then fine, we're experts, but that's, you know, so should everybody else be in that field? There's too many dangers out there without adding to them. Exactly. It's all about etiquette. Of course it's all, yeah. Respect. Yeah. Some of these people are vulnerable, really vulnerable and, you know, they don't feel safe in their own home and they're calling in a, a paranormal group to help them. They put their faith in this group, they put their trust in them. Mm. And they're probably going to say, well, they're, expert. they're experts, they know what they're, gonna, they know what they're saying, mm. um, so I'm going to do what they're asking me to. So it's like, in the way, I suppose there should be some kind of code of ethics because... It's a risk of decent groups. So yeah, good, I mean... good groups, you have a... Is there some kind of... Well, it's a list of rules, isn't it? There's a... Things yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I asked this chappy, you know, one this person, one of the people involved, how did they come across, you know, how did they come across us? Because um, they weren't, I mean, obviously we're based in Stockport, these people weren't. Mm. And they said, well, they've been on the website, they found us on the website, and they read our profile, and we appeared to be good for what they read. And even though we, you know, I've, we ensured these people that we had a 10-year record of success. They liked success. how professional we sounded. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, that's about, prof you know, professionalism and you, you conducting yourself to the right degree, but 10 years speaks for itself, you know, you've got a 10-year record that of helping people and you've never had any complaints, I mean, you can't help everybody, I suppose, because everyone's different, but I suppose just being there and listening and speaking to them in the right context, and knowing that someone's actually there listening to them without taking the mic mick out of them or thinking it's all a joke or when they've got no one else to talk to, can actually help a person a lot, you know, in that respect, and... I think we left that with a stage one where we probably won't have to go back, but we will contact these people just to, just to check on them to make sure that they're all right. So, 
Yeah, and, that, and that's what separates people, I think. You know, obviously it speaks for itself, like you were just saying there, Jill. Yeah, but sometimes be, having someone explaining what is in your home understand, for the person with you coming in, if it was my home, yeah. the understanding, you explaining to me what is there takes a lot of that fear away. Because if you don't know what's there and yeah. you, you, you're hearing things or if your child's speaking to an empty room... But if somebody comes in, I know we, we've all got experience in this, but for somebody that doesn't, people coming into their home and just maybe being able to explain to them if there's something mm. there, what it is, and maybe it's not of any, it's not there but to scare them all to do, you know, it might just be... Comfort them a little bit. But do you yeah. think it's wrong for, let's say, you go to a house, or some people go to a house and they visit these people, and these people are saying, look, I've got this, this, that and the other going on. I can't sleep, I'm terrified, I don't know what the hell's going on. <clears throat> this is happening, that's happening, I'm, I'm at my wit's end, can you do something about it, can you help me? And then these people who, who go along and visit them to try and help, turn around and say, well you've got this, this going on, you've got this here, I'm getting the presence of this, and I'm getting the presence of that, and there's a man up there, and there's a man there, or whatever the case is. Well, you prove it to me. Exactly, what I was going to say, don't you not think it's wrong for these people to portray that information to whoever's calling them, you know, whoever's called them out? Because if someone came to my house and said, there's a man in your hallway, or it's doing this and the other, then I would, before he told, he told me that there's a man in the hallway, I'd want proof that there was somebody in the hallway. Yeah. Because it, well, you don't, you might not tell them everything, because uh, you might not remember everything when they're in your house, but you'd expect them to do something, stay at your house for a good few hours and maybe, uh, whether it's a voice recorder, whether it's a camcorder, try and get something yeah. Yeah. to prove what they're saying is true, whether they've seen or heard something or... Just come to collect somebody. Oh, she disappeared. Just, sorry about that. It's just one of them just disappeared out of the room. Yeah, I always think, I mean, people are different. We all operate differently. But I think they'll you know, get to the root of the problem first by speaking to the person in question, finding out what makes them tick, um, the highs and the lows. And you just find out a lot about a person just yeah. by... Just speaking to them and let them be themselves and you'll find a lot of these issues can genuinely be, you know, sorted and closed up really. Um, just by conducting a, you know, a mutual conversation or communication between the person. A lot, like we said a minute ago, a lot can be achieved just by knowing, then knowing that you're listening and, and you're giving them advice and things. I mean, uh, most of the advice that's given is common sense to a degree anyway. Um, with a, you know, with a bit more uh, development uh, and guidance pushed in there, to to to, to help them pursue that uh, that peace of mind that they need, you know. So, but there's too many things out there. So, I mean, obviously we've gone from uh, Ouija boards to uh, exorcisms and charlatans. As it were. There's plenty of them. There was a good band then, weren't there? Charlatans. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Very good band in them days. Yeah. And the Stone Roses. Uh, Stone Roses. Yeah. Stone Roses. Are right. I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the podcasts that I was going to do in the future is um, based on um, Satanism, demonic and religion and things like that, but not and religion in a sense, because it's always good to stay, stay away from religion, but just certain little elements that surround, you know, you know uh, these type of things, obviously it's not, so you can't go into the full details into the church and things like that, but, you know, people's views on you know, on the on the good and the bad of things, you know, like this, this Satanism and things like that. Not that we're Satanists and we don't practice the occult and we don't crucify cats, you know, <laughs> things like that. And um, I can't get the team to run around naked um, and sacrifice the virgin. Never asked. Uh, <laughs> except for Ian, I think he likes to, I think he's volunteering. But there's people's got the belief, and the reason why I'm going to that one on one of the future podcasts, I think, is because of the influence of society, and the influence of Hollywood, and the brainwashing to some, maybe from, uh, well, churches of different religions and things like that. So I don't want to go into that too much, but that would be my own belief, what yeah, I'll be talking about. So, when I do talk about that on a future podcast, um, if there's any complaints that come from that, the team are not responsible, that's coming from myself, so they'll be free for that, and you can direct all your, your complaints, and you can direct all your criticisms towards Hate mail. You know, <laughs> and things like that, but I'm sure it'll be something that we will be talking about, uh, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, does anybody else want to say anything about it? It would be an interesting topic to bring up as well as, again, on this uh, 
program that me and Shirley have watched is uh, there is a church in London that has the zodiac on oh, the yes. ceiling. Oh. Signs of the zodiac actually on the, ce on the ceiling of the church. Right. So that might be an interesting thing to look at. Well, these are things. Yeah, exactly. Because people might be listening there and thinking, oh, it's going to it's going to speak speak something about you know religion and things. That's going to cause us. Um, He's going to blasphemous, so he's going to cause us uh, against our beliefs and um, a lot of, you know, uh, nasty untowards things. And that's not the case at all, because everybody, I respect everybody's belief. You know, Christian, Muslim, it doesn't matter what, everybody's belief. Um, it's just to point out, really, a few things. Like a lot of churches do hold artifacts and uh, designs and paintings and structural uh, add-ons and things like that that uh, go a little bit beyond what you class as norm. You know, you think well, that's a bit strange, and they all got they've all got stories about them, you know, and things like that. And, and they have gargoyles. Some have gargoyles to say that. You know, <laughs> why have a gargoyle now? That is churches, it? cathedrals. They've got them on the roof, or, or on parapets. They've got them on the walls. Exactly. Is it to scare away these evil spirits? Well, yeah, water away. Water away. So yeah. Gargoyles don't look exactly. They're like little, hey, like, they're like, they're uh, they're little like, hints, wings, and all that sort of thing. If evil, that's going to go there. The gargoyles look evil, so they'll be best of friends. I don't understand, you know, that's what they do. So, them are little things to discuss, you know, the structural architecture of that, of, you know, which is based on that type of thing, and why people go into different things, and uh, how TV and Hollywood and movies like Paranormal Activity. And all these things, they seem to, they influence people, and people see these, and they go out there, and they conduct, and again, that's a poll, so that could relate back to the dangers yeah, that we were initially talking about. Yeah, the poltergeist. The contouring. Yeah, all these films. So many... Well, people sit there, they watch them. Yeah, I will scare one going. No, right, the fear of that, I quite like the fear of that. That fear factor is something that we relish when we're out there and we're doing these investigations like sometimes burgers, actually. Well, <laughs> relish is pretty good in burgers but we're just wrapping this up you know the, the fear factor is there we, you do miss it and uh, it's good when you're doing corporate fear factor it, it replenishes that element of surprise it replenishes that uh, that <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Um, you know uh, and, and poltergeist and things like we were talking about you know you know um, is that the element of uh, of adolescence reaching puberty or is it supernatural elements of telekine you know, or telekinesis or demonic nature, who, you know, these things, who knows, but are they dangerous, you know, um, you've got the Enfield poltergeist and, you know, where, where things happen and people are lifted up in the air and landed on wardrobes and all these type of things, so, nonetheless, things do exist, things are real, we can't, exp you know, we can't uh, determine the existence of ghosts, but we can determine the existence of strange phenomena. So whatever that phenomena may be, is our goal and your goal in trying to determine its origins. I am Chris Andrews and we've been here with the Club Zero team and we're going to bring an end to this podcast. So what we want to do is you guys in paranormal land and the supernatural realm, tune in for our next podcast which will be just as interesting as this one I think. Guys out there, take care, reload us on iTunes or uh, listen to us on the internet on you can catch us on www.clubzeroparanormal.co.uk. You can find us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Phase2Para. Or email us at clubzeroghost at gmail.com. From me and the team out there in Paranormal Land, goodbye. Club Zero Paranormal.